Welcome to our crystallization suite, where we try to make extra crystallography dreams come true. So extra crystallography is this technique that we can use to figure out what proteins look like, so their structure at the atomic level. The basic idea is that you get the protein to form crystals, which I'll tell you more about, about in a minute, but it's this basically like the protein is frozen in this orderly position all over the crystal. And then you shine really energetic light at them, so x-ray radiation. The x-rays are going to go in and they're going to hit the protein crystal. And so proteins, like all matter, are made up of atoms, and atoms have um, subatomic parts, including electrons. And those electrons are going to interact with the incoming x-rays, and they're going to diffract those x-rays. So the x-rays come in, and they get diffracted. They get, like, scattered. Scattered rays are going to interact. When they interact, a couple things can happen. So waves, when you think about it, you have like this up, down, up, down. So if the ups are on, like canceled out by a down, you destructive interference when the waves in, um, interact. If they're both going up at the same time, you get constructive interference. And so the waves either cancel each other out or they um, add together to give you a stronger signal. And because of this orderly lattice thing, they cancel out almost everywhere except for specific spots. Um, and so at those specific places where you have constructive interference so the waves build together, they go out from the crystal in stronger rays, um, and then they go and they hit a detector. Then we can work backwards from that to figure out where the atoms were that actually scattered them. So it's this really cool technique, but to get it, you need that crystal. And it's actually really, usually really difficult to get a crystal to form. So basically a crystal is just this like orderly lattice. So it's kind of like a brick wall, except the bricks don't have to be like rectangular and they can be kind of weirdly positioned. Um, but the important thing is that you have this repeating unit all over the crystal and you can use um, like the same instructions to figure out the whole, like the same mathematical like movements to figure out the, get the whole structure of the crystal from just knowing the structure of like one of those units. And because you have this orderly lattice, that's how you can get the waves to interact in the same way. But so if you look at like something like this, so your protein isn't making up all of the brick. And there's only gonna be like specific places where the proteins are actually making interactions with, um, with other protein molecules. And those interactions are important because they actually like hold the crystal together. So when you think about like a crystal, the probably the most crystal you're most familiar with is salt. And so salt is a lot of um, intermolecular interaction. So the salt molecules are like all connected through these like strong, um, strongish bonds. So you have a salt crystal that's really hard. With a protein, like 50% of the crystal is actually water um, or solvent. So solvent is basically what the crystal is dissolved in. Um, so it can be the water, so it's typically like a buffer, so a pH stabilizer, and as well as salts, um, cryoprotectants, um, and things like that. Um, so we'll talk more about that later, but the basic idea is that because you want your protein in like the most natural state it can be in, but not be like actually in solution. So, but you start with the protein in solution. So what we mean by in solution is that every molecule of the protein is surrounded by a water coat. So it has its own water coat. In order to form a crystal, it has to lose a few of those, um, some of those water, 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 some of the water protein interactions to form protein protein interactions. And if you do this in this orderly way, you can get a crystal. So it starts like nucleation. So you have a couple of the molecules like freeze in the same position. And then they're kind of like the cool kids starting the trend. And then the other molecules um, of the protein will join in. And then you get this um, crystal growth from that initial nucleation. So that's what you want to happen. But what can happen also is that the protein gets overwhelmed and it just kind of forms tons and tons of protein-protein interactions. And you get this instead of like the protein-solvent interactions. Then you get this clumpy thing called an aggregate. So it's basically just like glunk. And you don't want the glunk, you want the crystal. So in order to get the crystal, you have to have it, make it give up some of its protein water interactions, but you don't want it to give up too many because then you get the aggregation. So it's this fine balance. Um, so it's really hard to find that spot. 
because in order to get it to do that, you have to be in this like super saturated zone. So the pro the, the solvent, so the water and stuff, it has more protein in it than it wants to, than it can like hold in a normal solution. So some of the protein is going to come out and you want to make sure it does that in that initial nucleation and then the growth and not in the aggregation. So in order to keep it in this super saturated state or get it to this super saturated state where it just does, was it does just like crash out, which is when it just precipitates into that aggregate, you have to try to use different um, methods. And so the most common method that you use um, is vapor diffusion, or at least that I've used. So the idea with vapor diffusion is that you have a um, some sort of plate. Um, so you have like a reservoir, where at the bottom you have some liquid, and then on top, this is just a really old dried out plate. Um, on the top you have like um, a film or a, this, like a glass slide. And on the slide, so that's for this is for the um, what we call penny drop. So then on that glass slide, you have a drop of the protein solution mixed with the solution of precipitants. So things like salts um, and polyethylene glycol, um, things that take a lot of, that steal a lot of the water molecules so that the protein can't have them. Um, so they promote the, they promote the precipitation of the protein. Um, and then you have, so you have, and then at the bottom, so in that welly part, you have just the precipitant solution. And so because you have this mixture of the protein solution and the precipitant solution in the drop, the drop is more dilute um, in terms of like the water. The, um, so there's like more water per precipitant um, in that drop than in the reservoir, so in the bottom part. So this is a simplified way of thinking about it, but you can think of the water kind of like um, coming out of the drop to kind of do, try to dilute the reservoir. Um, and so when the water goes out of the drop, um, it's diffusing. Um, so we call this vapor diffusion because it's like diffusing it as a as water vapor, so as a gas out of the drop. When the water's leaving the drop, what's happening is that the protein in the drop is getting more concentrated um, because you're losing water. And so if you do this, um, if this happens the, in a good way, then your protein will, can actually um, get into that super saturated state and form crystals. Um, you can also do this in the sitting drop method. Um, so this is a 96 well format, but this is a sitting drop uh, method. Um, so it's kind of hard to see here, but there are diff there's like little um, indentations in the top of these. Um, where you can actually like, so there's um, a reservoir where there's liquid and then uh, there's like these indentation ledges um, where you actually have your protein there. So it's kind of like that. Um, and it's the same idea up there. And there's also other methods of crystallization um, such as um, dialysis um, and um, microbatch and things like that. I'm not going to talk about. Um, but what I do want to talk about is um, some of the techniques that we can use in more detail in like the practical sense. Let me show you um, a cool picture of what um, we're aiming. Well, actually this sample is like more crystals than I'd want and it would actually be hard to fish them out. Um, so it's better to have like, usually better to have fewer bigger crystals. Uh, but this is one of the first crystals that I got early on. And I was really excited. It's really cool because you can like, when you're looking under the microscope, so I was looking under this microscope at the plate, um, and you can actually see the, like if you go down the different layers, you can see there's different layers of um, the protein. Because this video got kind of long, I think I'm going to save the more practical part for uh, another video. Um, but the key thing to keep in mind is that it normally starts off, finding the right conditions usually starts off with a lot of screens. Um, so you can actually buy like pre-made mixes of different um, combinations of salt, pH, that sort of thing to test. Um, and then we have this like pipette machine called a uh, mosquito that actually like sets up those trays for us. And then once we find an initial hit, we can go to um, like larger drops in bigger plates and then um, we monitor them 
Um, for crystal growth, um, so this is our formula tricks machine, and it's we call also call it our plate hotel because it holds all our fiber plates. And then it has a microscope um, where it takes pictures of them at um, scheduled time points. Um, and so yeah, so I will hold off on the more practical stuff because this went kind of long and I have to get back to my students now. Um, but hope this gave you an introduction into the basic uh, principle of crystallization.